Here's an interesting one for you. The Bull Transmark, not Bull Armory, M5 Jet with those massive ports. Not a lot of information about these out there on the internet. Picked it up through Atlantic Firearms. Today is going to be, well, the same format of review, but my exploration of this gun that I know next to nothing about. Coming up next on GB Guns. Interesting pistol indeed. As you guys saw in the tabletop, the construction style is different from what we know in today's double stack 1911s. However, in 1999 and 2000, two years only, this was what was available. Um, massive, massive ports on that barrel that should make for a loud experience. Um, I'm really curious to see how it runs. I'm curious to know, will it eat modern defensive ammo? The What's For Dinner test got started because not too long ago, a lot of guns were really picky eaters. So we'll be finding that out. We're also gonna try magazines. Does it run with the modern Bull Armory magazines? I really hope it does. Does it run with the uh, Duramag, which is your 2011 pattern magazines? Because they are slightly different. We'll find out. If not, I'm stuck with the one magazine that came with it. I bought this from Atlantic Firearms. They have long, long been a source of where I go to drool over interesting, unique, and different things. Um, very much within the spirit of what you see here on the channel of me reviewing things that other folks don't and uh, odd and different models. Atlantic Firearms is a source for it. They listed these. I don't know how, when you're watching this video versus <laughs> when I bought it, but listen them briefly and I was able to uh, jump right on it and get it. So for first shots, as always, we've got our reduced size C-Zone piece of steel out there at about 20 yards. I've got 10 rounds of Fioki 115 grain range dynamics, um, tends to be kind of on the softer side of things, and the one magazine it came with. I'm sure I'm in frame. I wish Tia was here to film. Um, we might get some interesting things out of these ports. Black on black sights that I'm not a fan of. Ooh, that's loud. Hit a little low. There we go. Now, when you've got a gun that's almost, well, that's over 20 years old, some things are broken in <laughs> real well. This trigger is crisp. My eyes sure have trouble finding that front sight though. Definitely seen some muzzle flash in this low light. Oh, we had a failure to feed. It seems to be good and stuck. Or did the, no, the slide lock, slide lock was in position. I wonder if I bumped it. That was on the last round. Man, those ports work. I'm definitely feeling the percussion. Smooth, smooth shooter. Really, really soft. Um, the only thing keeping me from being able to run a little bit quicker is visibility of that front sight post. And uh, of course, a little bit of being dazed by the, uh, I know that port and comp barrels are all the rage these days, but if you haven't shot one, they certainly put off some percussion that uh, can be a bad thing. It can be something you don't want to do indoors or in your car, things like that. So that's why I generally stay away from them for defensive pistols, but for range pistols, it's a different matter. I've loaded five rounds of that same Fioki into a modern armory magazine. Sticks out a little bit. We'll see if it runs. Yes, and it locks back. That's nice. Now let's put a few, five more rounds through a 2011 pattern magazine from Duramag. These are the mags they made for the Prodigy. And see if that works, because on the table it seemed like it might. Interesting. So the modern bull armory pistols, like what I've been carrying, the SAS2 TAC four and a quarter. Um, it's a different magazine, slightly higher capacity slightly uh slightly different fit but this thing from uh the late 90s early 2000s seems to be 
omnivorous with magazines. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> that makes me really happy because it should make what's for dinner a whole lot easier. And that's what's coming up next. And it's that time again. Thanks to our MO Squared supporters, patron supporters, and me just shopping. <laughs> it's what's for dinner time. As we scroll by these, you'll notice that across these 10 different loads, we go from 100 grain up to 158 grain today. And the ogives in different locations, we've got different bro bullet profiles, case materials, and coatings, etc. This is a test that is not pass fail of the gun or the ammo, it's the combination. This is to give you an idea what might or might not run in the gun. Three rounds each for each load to see if it feeds from slide lock. Does it cycle and feed another of the same type? Third round to reduce variables. Let's get to it. This will be an interesting one. We've got three different magazine styles, 10 different loads, and a gun that uh, has probably never seen any of them. We are seven yards away from our target. Those circles are two inches. Not the most precise aiming point, but it does its job for this type of thing. Starting off with the factory magazine that came with it and that 1776 lead free sporting 90 grainer. Some of these loads are probably going to make for a light show. I hope the camera catches it. Oh, super soft. Oh my gosh, that was ridiculous but it doesn't want to feed. Nope, once again, the slide lock is up. So possibly a mechanical deficiency with gun that happens with age and use. But wow, that was soft. Now the 100 grain critical defense light, little pointy bullet. Ooh, I think I heard a hiccup there. Also stupid soft, why did it hit so far low? Absurdly soft, I hope you guys saw that. Um, why the impacts were down there, I do not know. And that was a Prodigy magazine, or a, um, yeah, Prodigy magazine. Now back to a Bull Armory magazine, the SMB 100 grain Anon Tox, strange shaped bullet. Circle three. Silly soft, great group. <laughs> this was a heck of a buy. Now I'm having to pause, however, because the percussion from those ports is a little bit dazing. Uh, I'm sure you learn to drive through it, but it's, it's making me have to refocus my eye on the front sight post. Um, sort of like when a camera drifts in and out of focus, that's what's happening um, with these. Now some Blazer aluminum, 115 grain. We're back to a pull armory magazine. Those were not as spicy. They're not as, yeah, but it shot pretty darn well. This will be fun. Federal Syntec 130 grain PCC. Now when the Humble Marksman was out here and we shot his Takato XC, we found that, and our theory is, since this PCC stuff likely has slower burning powders meant to make the most out of a 16 inch barrel, when you've got ports, that's more gas pressure to act on those ports. So this could be, Silly flat shooting. Let's see, circle five. I wouldn't say anything magical this time. Maybe because it's a shorter barrel. I don't know. Circle six, Federal Syntec Defense, 138 green. Man, you want to talk about a projectile type that did not was not in common circulation in 1999. Synthetic jacketed, breaks apart into three main pedals and one core that goes forward. These tend to have high recoil. Yep. I'm hitting low again. It smells a little bit like cinnamon. Um, that grouped really, really well. <laughs> um, it's an interesting sensation. Like the, the punch is still there, but the flip is not because the ports are taking out the flip. 
SMB 140 grain or yeah 140 grain subsonic, um, which means light for subsonic and obviously less powder for circle seven. No issues. That uh, it might be because I'm wearing a build hat that I'm getting that percussion. It it feels like it's smacking me every time. Next up from the dual pack, uh, practice and defend federal 147 grain uh, training match. It's supposed to be matched to the 147 grain HSTs, which we'll shoot next. Um, this load tends to be spicy. Circle eight. Yep. Grouped well though, this is a fun gun. Thank you Atlantic Firearms for making this kind of stuff available. This is a neat find. Now the HSTs, 147 grains. That one, I felt the slide bottom out. Um, I felt some recoil smack going on in there. Um, could be a worn spring it's an old gun could be that was the limit of what this thing was <coughs> intended for and our last one i'm going to go back to the original magazine that came with the gun i can get it to load there we go ppu 158 grain subsonic super heavy load long bullet tends to be a very soft shooter to begin with Let's see how we do Again, our slide lock is up. My thumbs are nowhere near it. And again, we're hitting low. Interesting. Um, so I already commented earlier that I'm not a fan of black on black sights because they're hard to see. I am making sure I have a clear sight picture before shooting, but when you've got ports like this, you don't have much of an option for a front sight post because you'll roast whatever's there um, or at least black it out. So it being black to begin with um, is a smart thing. You can see the fouling on the barrel from those ports doing their job. This is kind of fun. <laughs> Let's head over to the spinner for sights and trigger control. That's a six inch spinner target. We are 13 yards away. I use this to test sights and trigger control because it's a small target that starts moving and the more I hit it, the more it moves and the more important timing a well-placed shot can be. With these low hits, I think I'll favor a little high using a Fioki 115 grain to give myself eight rounds. This is where our that daze factor is really going to be an issue. Or not, because I got used to it. The sights I already mentioned, I'm not a fan of the trigger. I mentioned, well, it's got decades of shooting time and if you've ever had a hammer fired gun with a lot of rounds through it you know that sometimes stuff starts to polish in there and it gets pretty sweet that's where the trigger is on this thing where this is relevant to a modern gun and something you might be picking up or considering is the ports in the rounds leading up to this i grew a little accustomed to that impact and once again it might just be smacking the bill of my hat um, causing issues there but I was able to push through it, drive through it, um, just like I'm sure many of the competitive shooters do who shoot ported guns a lot, especially indoors. Um, oh, ha. Once again, we had slide lock with round still in the magazine. This is the same magazine that happened to me last time. This is the mag magazine that was included with the gun. I think for practical accuracy, I'll swap over to a modern mag. Mags are expendable items. They do have a lifespan. Um, I have stuff from World War II that's still good, but that doesn't mean that something 20 years old can't go bad on me. Overall though, um, the lesson here, porting, yeah, it, it can cause some days uh, when you first shoot it. If you adapt to it, it can be overcome, at least outdoors. <laughs> All right, let's shoot some groups. Now using a modern production bolt armory magazine, 
or back at seven yards, be aiming at a one inch square, one there on the left. Typically it's the same size as the front sight post. It's great for fiber optics. Black on black sights might be a little tough. Same Fioki 115 grain, inch dynamics. And let's see how we do. I'm going to aim center on that thing so we can get an answer on our point of aim, point of impact thing. Well, I'd say the rifling's still good on this. What a fun pistol to get to know. This is a cool one. And if you guys enjoy stuff like this, that's a little off the beaten path, a little different, and uh, not even in production anymore, please consider being a patron. Patrons, thank you, you guys helped fund this. Um, didn't pay for all of it, we don't have that many patrons, but uh, I still have a day job, <laughs> a real job. So uh, I was able to uh, kick in my own. Um, neat piece. So how is it relevant to you guys? There were only a few of these made uh, over 20 years ago. One, uh, be on the lookout for cool stuff. I want to say a big thanks to Atlantic Firearms, and I don't think they even know that I bought this um, or are expecting a video or anything like that. Um, but big thanks to them for finding odd stuff like this and making it available. Uh, it's always been my go-to find places like that that have different things and support them because this is not the message but um diversity like this helps keep the market exciting and different i know a lot of you come to gb guns because i review stuff off the beaten path and uh, not just the same big four brands that everybody else covers every time they have a new product if you're like that, be on the lookout for this stuff and support companies who are trying to do something different. This, um, as you saw on the tabletop, this design of a lower is different than we're seeing in production today. Why is it different now? I don't know. Um, this seems to work fine. Ports of this size are probably bleeding a lot of velocity. As you can, can see the distance they are from the muzzle. I meant to bring the chronograph and wanted to compare it against my Bull Armory four and a quarter inch, since this is also a four and a quarter inch, though it was listed at uh, 4.3. I guess it doesn't really matter much. I'm curious how much velocity we're losing. Um, is it enough to be significant or put defensive ammo at risk? Maybe. Would I carry something like this for defensive use? No. Um, ports these <laughs> this big, especially. The blast uh, in your car or in your house would be uh, dazzling for everyone involved, including you. And that's not good when you're the shooter. But out here on the range, it's fun. I hope the footage showed just how soft some of those Lust for Dinner loads felt. There were a couple times when, um, I mean, heck, I've shot 22s that felt like that. So it uh, definitely kept it there. I wish I could put a different sight on it or maybe a red dot since the dot's way back here. It would be clear from that blast not an option on something built in 99 because back then nobody cared about red dots except for the extremist of extreme competitors. Um, cool historical piece, interesting to see how things have evolved. I highly suspect but don't know for certain that Bull Transmark is what became the Bull Armory we have today. Um, I'll try to find that out and maybe include it in the write-up on this thing. Uh, if I can get a solid answer, but there's really not a lot of information out there on it. Risks to getting something like this that's out of production from a company that officially doesn't exist anymore, of course, are that uh, parts may be hard to come by. You're not going to get any warranty support. I trust that enough of this is 1911 that if I have issues, I can interchange with 1911 parts. But um, really, this is going to be more of a collector and reference historical piece for me than something I'm going to put a ton of rounds through. Um, it is pretty fun. Maybe we can get Tia to shoot it because uh, it's quite an experience. Uh, <laughs> just have her turn her hat around or something. Uh, have to wear a hat at this range. It's the rules also, uh, there are neighboring bays behind the camera and behind me. A lot of guys like to shoot steel at distances that uh, I don't consider safe. And as a result, a lot of spall ends up landing over here. So the hat helps keep that stuff safe and out of my eyes. 
Anyways, long story short, this is this is a cool one. If you guys know anything about this, because I know we have um, an audience who like eclectic things as well as collectors in the international scene, um, please let us know in the comments. Share the knowledge. Uh, if it seems valid, I'll include it in the article as well. Thanks for watching.